nagsapit po ng Pasko hanggang bagong taon, marami sa ating mga OFWs ang umuwi magbakasyon at makasama ang kanilang mga pamilya. Subalit, hindi lahat sila ay masaya. Marami sa kanila ay dumidiretso pa sa aking programa para humingi ng tulong dahil bakit pa ba makawi ay ubus na ang kanilang sahod. Bakit? Sabi nila, mag-iba sa dami ng kapamilyang binubuhay mula asawa, anak, magulang at kapatid, Darasan na hindi tama ang pagbibigay ng benefits. Meron pa mga dagdag bayarin, kagaya ng contribution sa PhilHealth, na hindi naman daw nila napapakinabangan. PhilHealth, meron na bang pakinabang sa ating mga OFWs? To address this issue, nagpatawag po ako ng isang consultative meeting last January 11, 2023 with the Department of Migrant Workers, PhilHealth, and other stakeholders representatives of WS and it has come to my attention the alarming fact that the Universal Health Care Act this important piece of legislation has failed to address their needs that is why I'm here today to support the proposals for an amendment to the Universal Health Care law one that will address the specific needs of our migrant workers and provide them with the support and protection required Thus, I believe that we should exempt migrant workers from the requirement to pay contributions to full health. As it stands, these workers are paying into a system that does not fully address their health care needs due to the nature of their work and their status as overseas workers. This is simply unacceptable. And it is time for us to provide them with a solution that works for them. We have to remember that these workers are the breadwinners of their families, which not only include their wives and children, but most often, they even support their entire clan. Yung halagang 8,700 pesos na annual contributions sa PhilHealth, marahil maliit lang sa nakararami, pero mabigat na talaga yun sa kanila. Tapos, ibibigay pa sa PhilHealth. In light of this, believe that it is not appropriate to impose further financial burdens on our citizens, including our migrant workers. That is why I'm proposing that we revisit the issue of premium rate increases and work together to find a solution that is both fair and equitable. I'm glad that the President suspended the rate increase for contributions and the income floor remains for this year. But this is merely a temporary solution. Socioeconomic situation has yet to improve. And I, like I said, we need urgent solutions that will provide a more permanent effect. With the proposal amendments, agree that the field contributions for migrant workers be voluntary. Again, voluntary. And empower the Overseas Workers' Work Administration to provide for their health care needs. This will ensure that our migrant workers have access to the support and protection they need when they need it most, while also freeing up funds that they can use to support their families and communities back home. In addition, I believe that we must also make use of modern technology and telemedicine to provide medical assistance to our migrant workers, no matter where they are in the world. This will allow them to access quality healthcare services without having to travel long distances or incur significant expenses. And it will be a major step forward in addressing the unique challenges they face. In conclusion, I believe this amendment to the universal healthcare law is a necessary and important step forward for our migrant workers. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you to make it a reality. Maraming salamat po at patuloy po akong sumasaludo sa ating mga OFWs in light of this. I believe that this is not appropriate to impose further financial burdens on our citizens, including our migrant workers. That is why I'm proposing that we revisit the issue of premium rate increase and work together to find solution that is both equitable. Naulit ata ito. Sino ba gumawa na isa? In conclusion, I believe that this amendment to the Universal Health Care Law is a necessary important step toward migrant workers, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. 
Maraming salamat po. Tuloy po akong sumasaludo sa ating mga OFWs. Thank you, Sen. Rafi Tulfo. Anyway, I just like to, as the uh, principal sponsored author of this Universal Health Care Act, the reason why we have uh, proposed amendments because we will only um, realize the flaws and the necessary adjustments that needed once it is implemented. Wala na makasim perfectum batas. Ito igawaran din po natin. So now, this is the reason. And uh, also, if I may address. Um, FWs and our workers that uh, I hope that uh, they would understand that the, the time that we were drafting and uh, deliberating on this law what that was 2016-17 up to 2019 before its passage wala hong naka, naka predict magkakaroon ng pandemia. The world's economy the Philippine economy was good all of the data all of the numbers that we used as a reference, kaya nga po sa premium, was, was based on the circumstances at the time. But because of the pandemic, it's not only the Philippines, it's not only our workers that struggled, it's the whole world. That's why we have to adapt to the situation. And that's, a, that's the reason why we call this meeting, so that we can hear from DOH, the, uh, the, what's the status of the implementation from PhilHealth, what will be the effects in case uh, we will have... Uh, this is um, just the premium heights, uh, premium uh, contributions. So we will have, uh, we, anyway, the, the bottom line is we want to improve the quality of lives of our people and not be a burden to give access to quality, good quality health care for all Filipinos. But after the information of um, OFW, so Sen. Rafi, kasi, no, kasi sila po yung naapektuhan, that's why we also want to to hear from the MW and uh, the only the OFWs, our um, local employees, uh, go both government and private alike. Um, just for the record also that uh, all Filipinos are now considered members. So kahit OFW, yung mga naiwan po nila dito, kinukover po ng PhilHealth, no? Uh, kung magkakasakit. So, yan po yung mamaya maririnig po natin. So, we will find the the imbalance, the win-win situation, kung ano po yung hindi magiging mabigat sa ating contributors na mag-improve naman natin yung servisyo ng ating mga uh, health services. Anyway, that's the primary objective of the Universal Healthcare Act. To improve the quality of lives, at least makagaan no, yung isa sa pinakamabigat na expenses ng uh, bawat Pilipino, yung pong medical expenses kasi, no, lalo na sa gamot at iba pa. Anyway, um, this morning we would like first to hear from DOH, PhilHealth, BBM, DOF, PAGCOR, PCSO regarding the status of the implementation of the Universal Healthcare Act because uh, we are already in the second year of implementation or going to the third year. So what necessary adjustments, ano po ang kulang, ano po saan tayo pwede magdagdag, what necessary adjustments need to be uh, done so that uh, we can fine-tune and uh, make it better, okay? So, the Chair would like to ask uh, DOH, Mr. Uh, Yusek um, Kenneth, for your presentation and uh, from your statement, probably if you have any presentation, as to the, pro as the, as to the current uh, status of the implementation of UHC. Yusek Kenneth. Thank you very much, uh, Senator, and uh, good morning po, uh, Senator Ejercito and Senator uh, uh, tool for and to the rest of uh, the people here. Uh, so can we have the next slide, please? Yeah. So according to the timeline in the UHC uh, Act, uh, this is represented by uh, boxes as we see. We need to implement managerial and technical integration until 2023. These are the green boxes that you see. Uh, financial integration from this time on, uh, perhaps mid-year of 2023 to 2025, and by 2026, we're supposed to come up with an executive order on the mandatory integration. Marami kasi sa mga OFWs nagreklamo sa akin na bakit kami uh, inoobliga uh, na magbayad ng premium sa PhilHealth. Now, uh, Senator JV sent me with this document, and I think this document comes from you. Ama, now, this contradicts doon sa mga reklamo ng mga FWs na hindi rin nila pinapakinabangan. Napapakinabangan yung uh, 
it will help premium of Kasi, example, 2021, 210 million ang totally collected premiums from the OFWs. Tama. And then the claims paid for that particular year was 1.42 billion. So, ibig sabihin, talagang sobra-sobra ang pakinabang ng OFWs. Am I right? And then, same on 2020, 340 million and the claims paid 1.36 billion. Is it accurate? Is this accurate record? And then it goes on and on. Pataas ng pa one uh, no, uh, 2019, 1.1 million ang uh, nakolekta millions to right? Not billions. Yes, sir. 1.2 million. Billion. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay. 1.2 billion um, and then 2.7 billion ang claims paid. So limitaw na talagang sulit na sulit. Ano po? Mas malaki pa yung nababayan ng claims versus sa premiums collected. So bakit po ang dami pa rin mga OFWs na reklamo na wala kaming pakinabang dyan. Bayad kami ng bayad. And bakit pa kasahan yung bayad namin? So hindi po tumutugma. Maliban na lamang maliban na lamang kung ito ay tumutugma doon sa kumalat na mabalita noon na marami sa mga clinics at mga doktor nagpa-file ng mga bogus claims. Ano po sa palagay nyo, Yusek? Uh, Senator Tulfo may defer that to uh, PhilHealth galing po sa PhilHealth. Probably, uh, newly <laughs> the president of PhilHealth may nalilidesmak and answer. Alam ko, kaka-assume nyo lang, but siguro anybody from PhilHealth can answer. Uh, I'll answer, Your Honor. Um, thank you, Your Honor, Your Honors. Um, my answer would be human nature kasi po people are always hoping for more. You know? uh, I think generally, regardless of your status in life, uh, very few are really satisfied. No? Palaging sana mas mataas, sana mas marami. No? So I think uh, we will, I will answer your question by looking at the facts. No. And okay, so sir, may I interrupt just a minute? Just a second. Yes, sir. Hoping for more, hindi contento yung ibang tao. So, ibig mong sabihin, sakim at greedy ang mga FWs natin? Is that what you mean? Hindi po. I, I was saying... Uh, sir, own... please don't use those words. Nakaka-offend po na hindi contento. Kasi that's tantamon to saying na people are greedy and, and sakim in Tagalog. I apologize. I apologize for the comment, Your Honor. Thank you, sir.